you want me to sit down and then say this yeah, straight yeah. away? You guys ready? Sorry, always into the camera or? Yeah. Take three, take one. I'm George Russell. Hi, I'm Daniel Ricciardo. I'm Landon Norris. My name is Pierre Gasly. I'm Esteban Ocon, and I'm going to be talking to you about my experience in Formula One. Why do I race? I wish I knew. Uh. I race because of the thrill of speed, that adrenaline rush is just incredible. I race because I love competition. First of all, I race because I love speed. I love sitting in a race car and, and, and be on the limit, on the edge. And I race because that's all I did my whole life. <laughs> I am a super competitive person, so I need to have competition in my life in anything I do. I get to compete driving the fastest cars and racing the fastest cars in the world. And to me, there is no, no better life than that. So. I want to be the best driver there is. I want to be better than every other driver that I'm racing against. And I love it. Simple as that. Next question. I think if we had to have only one thing and one thing only, it, it's neck. It's our neck strength. I have a strong neck, big neck. Everything in the car is supported very well. So I have the seat belts, I have a seat which is made for me. So it's very, very comfortable. The only thing which is not supported is, is our head. It's supported from, from behind, but it's not supported on the side. So Formula One cars are extremely quick in the, in the corners. We pull five and a half, six G, which is difficult to describe to a person that's never tried it, but it's like a jet, right? It's like a, a jet flying in the air. You know, that warm up is so important because you arrive, you're sat on the grid, those five lights are coming on and it can be split second decisions that make a, a huge difference. So a good warm up, getting the heart rate up, you know, not too close to the race, so it has some fatigue, but close enough that you can carry that forward into that race start. You know, one day uh, properly training to, to get uh, bogged up, and then the other day to do a bit of cardio. It's two things that don't match together, but it's very important to be physically good all around in a Formula One car, because you need to be reactive, you need to be strong, but you also need to have the endurance. I would say being an athlete in general uh, require a lot of time, dedication, which means you gotta make sacrifices on other pleasures in life. And if you wanna be the best in your sports or even in your industry, it just the amount of focus and dedication and commitment you gotta put into your work is huge. Any more questions? You want me to talk about the whole thing? I always call my parents, my parents call me. Still, my mum always wants to hear my voice before I go and race, so that's number one. I like to have a little bit of a sleep. I do some stretching, I do some quite simple things before I get in the car. It's a busy Sunday morning. I always do like a power nap. I take 15, 20 minutes, an hour before the race, and um, it's my way of switching off with any external thoughts or, or pressure. I usually have a coffee like right before I kind of um, go to sleep. And then, yeah, when I wake up 20 minutes later, I'm like super switched on and feeling like super strong and ready for, for the race. Get a little bit of blood flowing through uh, some movement, a little bit of adrenaline up, but not to a point where I'm actually starting to use it. It's just prepping it, prepping it, so that by the race start, let's say firing, because the first lap of the race is the most important and most of the time the most critical uh, part of our day. The most important thing on race day is no distractions. You've got to be in the zone, 110% focused on that one goal, which ultimately for all of us is, is to try and win. So I always jump from the right side into the cockpit. The warm-up tends to, to be uh, very similar uh, as well. Uh, I have a playlist also uh, that I put during my warm-up, so uh, always in the same order. A few little things like this that um, you know, has helped me to, to keep my routine, and, and once it works, you get the result well, I keep it the same. There are 20 Formula One drivers in the world and I guess it's only us 20 who can really truly represent with one another because we are in this position together. When the helmet's on, all of this disappears and you have this warrior mindset and you have one goal, which is to go forward to attack. If I was driving on my own, 
it would nowhere near be the same feeling. I wouldn't get the same satisfaction. You know, there's no one really to push you to that next step. So the competition makes everything. I love having battles. I love having rivals. I love going will to will. I mean, winning is the highest feeling you can have, but a close second is overtaking someone. You know, if you're able to pull off a massive overtake, it's a powerful feeling. I think the thing which makes Formula One very competitive and very difficult and special, at all times, everyone is your competition. There is, of course, a, the guy you want to beat, who is probably the champion from the previous year. But there's never one competition. I guess maybe in this time where we are right now, it's Ferrari. But next year, it might not. Might, maybe it can be a Mercedes or it can be any other team. It's definitely a bit of a, an alpha kind of feeling. I wouldn't do it if the competition didn't exist. I'm not gonna uh, give the name to all the other drivers, but, but I enjoy you know, doing the races. I've worked my whole life to, to get where I am today. It's a lot of fun. An aspect which I'm always trying to improve, really making a point to be completely switched on, have 100% clarity, and also a little bit of aggression and anger in you know, the first 30, 60 seconds of the race. That's where I want to be better than everyone and that's what I'm, I'm working on getting better at. To become world champion uh, one day, so it is not one thing to improve, it's a lot of different details that you need to get right to, to reach that level, but it is my ultimate target and that's what I want to be. I think the biggest thing for me is having mistakes, you know, making these mistakes allow you to learn, allow you to develop, and if you go through your career, especially as a youngster, making their mistakes, you can't learn from that, and mistakes will always happen later down the line so not being afraid to make mistakes and and learning from them and, and, I, and I believe that is the best way to improve and develop your skills. For, for many years I had someone, uh, a psychologist who I would speak to because especially my first year of Formula One there's so much pressure, there's so many things to think about, it can start to have quite a big impact on you as a person so speaking to someone, opening up, seeing what you struggle with then um, can really help you when you come into the races and when you need to think of so many things at the same time. Most teams have, you know, between 500 and 1,000 people. So there's a lot of pressure on us drivers to perform and to deliver, let alone, you know, the world watching in a way. So that's, that's a pressure in itself. We get support from the pits and, and our team during the race, but it's ultimately it's us behind the wheel. So you kind of have to break down all the externals and really just focus on the act. And I think use that pressure as a platform to, you know, show off, succeed, be the best. I think if you get to a point where you can smile and laugh in those high pressure moments, then you're two steps ahead of your competition. There is, of course, a lot of pressure uh, in Formula One when you are performing, when you are feeling surrounded well by, by, by the team, by your team, by the people that you care. I think this is the most important. I think the entourage is probably the most important thing and that helps you to keep the, the stress level uh, low. There's one person who speaks to me at um at any time during the race, there's, there's one person. So he needs to know the right things to say to me sometimes because of course we get angry. We have a lot of emotions when we're, when we're driving a Formula One car. So you can be happy, sad, frustrated, mad, angry, whatever. Dealing with all of this and not letting it affect you is, is very important. So then also this one person who can speak to you, he needs, needs to know the right things to say in order to, um, to make you focus, in order to make you calm, in order to make you do the best job that you can do. For me personally, it's not overthinking it and treating it like it's any other session, whether it's a practice session, a qualifying session, a day in the simulator. I'm driving, it's just another day driving. I think it's all up in your head and if you overthink it and you, and you try and overcompensate, this is when the mistakes do happen. I wouldn't say I'm the best with advice. There's many other things I can do better than, than give advice, but um, one thing I've, I've learned which um, is always hard to admit is if you think you're working hard, if you think you're spending a lot of time, there's probably always going to be someone who's spending even more time and trying to work even harder than you are. Always trying to find that little bit more, put in that little bit more effort. It always pays off eventually. The most important is to always believe in your dreams, no matter what happens. I face the same situation where people come to you and tell you like, there are only 20 drivers in Formula One in the um, entire world so like basically you've got no chance even if there is 0 
percent of chance you'll make it. That's the mentality that I, I followed, and it wasn't always fun to listen to these guys, but it kind of filled me up with so much energy to uh, prove them that yeah, that's not the right approach. Like I think you, you should always fight for your dreams and try to make them true. And uh, it might not work, but at least you try, and then if it works, then. You end up the happiest in your life. My advice would be just enjoy uh, what you do if you have the chance to race in go-kart uh, already. It is a big chance. Um, you know, a lot of, of uh, drivers that I know are not able to already race in karting. So, you know, take your time. If you are racing, uh, just don't stress about it. Just be yourself. It needs to remain fun. You know, you need to be having fun whilst doing it. And I think that is a way that you'll keep enjoying it and find ways to succeed. Or you need discipline, you need motivation, determination, all these things to try to separate you from the rest because many can do it, many are talented to do it. I think if you keep it fun and really have that as the core of why you're doing it, then I think that's kind of the easiest way to succeed with it. Keep practicing, work as hard as possible. It's never enough. If you think it's enough, it's not and you need to go above and beyond and show everybody how willing you are to, to succeed. Adios. Oh. <laughs>